Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, December 20th. And today we are going to do something a little different because I don't have as much time. Um, But we're going to cover yield max income ETFs, uh, TSLY and CONY. And in the same video, I'm going to cover the Defiance ETFs, QQQY and JEPY. I just don't have time to separate them today. So the options were don't do Defiance or just throw Defiance, you know, in this video. And I'll do that and see how it works. But out of respect to the Yield Max people, I'll start Yield Max first. Um, I just got done commuting to work, by the way. You know, as always, it's a good hour. So I apologize if I get anything wrong. You know how, uh, you know, long commutes go. Especially in New Jersey, you know, people are, some, some of them are nuts. Um, so TSLY is what you see. They have a synthetic 250 position. And yet again, no trades. No trades at all. So this lonely synthetic, 34,125 contracts, has no friends. But let's see if we closed our synthetic today and we rolled it. it you know, the close would make us actually $16 million. Because if you look, TSLA is now well above the strike of 250. So if they wanted to, which they probably won't unless it goes above 260, but if they wanted to, they could roll this out, you know, the price out a little further to 255 with the same expiration. And then they get us a little, maybe a little bonus uh, for the Christmas payment. It's not really a Christmas payment at that point. It'll be January, but, um, you know, who knows what they'll do. Anyway, let's move on. All right, so as mentioned, no calls, but let's look at the price. Yesterday, TSLY went up 1.77%, and TSLA, Tesla, went up 2.04%. You know, we're uh, essentially getting to the capped point. You know, we have, what's our strike? 262.50, and we said it's 257.22. Okay, so... Yeah, we did not get the full potential, um, you know, capital gains, I'll say, but we got pretty close to it. So that's, you know, it's good enough. Outstanding shares, really nothing, nothing to talk about, no, no changes. It seems like there's not much a new interest in the TSLY fund, which is, you know, unusual. Uh, cash and treasuries went up 136000 which again, nothing nothing to really talk about. Uh, But if we go under active, we can see our strike is currently 2.05% out of the money. Now, we have three trading days left, so that's a little uncomfortable. Um, And again, uh, we'll see what happens. The IV, the 30-day IV is 43%. So what do we want to happen? We want, I say, Tesla to go up, you know, 70.75% 70.75% a day. I'll take that. So we we are now at the 1208 mark. We finally hit 12. Um, our potential capital gains for the rest of the week, I'm showing, could be 25 cents, which is nothing. Not, you know, not much, but it helps. My reaction, I'm just going to grind my teeth and hope nothing drastic happens. You know, no, no crazy bullish news on Tesla happens. If it stays flat, that's good. If it goes up a little, that's good. If it goes up a lot, no good. Um, so that's really the hope. Total payment, no, again, no, nothing changed. So the payment is still seventy-two cents uh, with a hundred percent payout. You know, as we stand. But you know, Friday's coming up, and they'll make more money. And obviously, this this number will jump up. So they may, you know, it's possible they may not make money if Tesla, you know, goes up drastically this week. But odds are they're going to make money, and if they keep making money on the short calls, guess what? They can leave this synthetic alone. You know what I mean? Like Coney, they have to roll their synthetic because they're not making money on the short calls, but they're making, you know, they don't have to. The the synthetic is making them enough money, but you know, it'd be, it'd be luck. If they essentially make money on both synthetic and short calls, you know, that, that's, you know, that's what would give you the hundred percent yield, 150% yield like insane yield, but all things have to work out. Um, but anyway, that's TSLY. Let's get into Coney since we're talking about Coney. 
Coney had a trade. Um, only 30 contracts. So they added 30 contracts to the synthetic position of 140 strike. So they now have 11,520 contracts. If they closed it today, they would make 23 million on that, which is a lot of money. And their price, look at it, it's 161. Their strike for the synthetic is 140. So if I were to guess, if coin continues to stay green, they're going to roll this uh, up yet again. And guess what? The next payment will be up yet again. But we'll calculate it. We'll see what it could look like. Um, calls tab. We'll talk about price first. Coney went up 3%. Insane. Absolutely insane. Coin went up 5%. You know what that means? We're getting, you know, we're capping. We are capping. They didn't sell those calls out far enough. You know, what are they doing? Come on, guys. Uh, cash and treasuries. We'll take a quick look. Cash went up uh, about two million. Treasury stayed about the same. So if you if you see, it's about one point nine million dollar jump. Outstanding shares continuing to go up for Coney six point eight million. Uh, total income for short calls still a debit, so nothing to really talk about. Uh, if they're going to pay us, they're going to have to roll that synthetic because we have a five point eight million dollar debit, and you know they have a lingering possible payment or you know credit of 23 million you know, keep in mind if they roll they're going to pay money on the new synthetic position but still all they have to do you know is make i don't know i'll, I'll figure it out what, what they have to make to make you know to pay us a pretty penny but um let's move on let's go to active yeah so like i said not good man not good six thousand most of their contracts, 6,405, 157.50 strike. We are underwater on Coney, 2.27% in the money. Yikes, yikes, yikes. What are they going to do? Now, the rest of the contracts, essentially, 5,085 is at 160, and that's also underwater, but at least it's only 0.72%. However, we have three trading days left, so this is going to get ugly. Um, the 30 contracts that they just added to the synthetic, that's a 167.50 strike. They only went 3.93% out of the money. They should have just went like, you know, they should have made it 170 or 175. Why not? What are you doing? You know, just that's, you know, cause the more they go up, the more potential capital gains you can have for the rest of the week. Look at that IV, by the way. Oh my God. They're almost hitting 80%. Oh my God. Like, woof. For those of you that, if your portfolio is mostly Coney, man, you are just balling. You're celebrating. You're like, woohoo. I know Ethan, um, who has a, uh, you know, shout out to Ethan, has a YouTube. He talks about crypto all the time. I know he bought a lot of Coney, so he's probably, he's probably real pumped. I'm hoping he didn't sell it. But anyway, let's move on. 2680 is the current price. Look at that. Oh my God. All right, potential capital gains, uh, essentially nothing because I'm showing negative because they're, you know, capped out and I'm crying. My reaction is I'm crying because it sucks. You know, you don't want to see Coney get capped out, especially with three trading days left. They played it, you know, they didn't, they weren't, uh, they didn't go too far out. You know, they didn't go far enough out. What was Friday, the 15th? You know, if you look, what were their calls? Yeah, I think Friday was the 15th. What's today? Today is the 20th. Yeah. All right, whatever. Anyway, they went out, what, 6%, 8%. They should have went out double digits like they did the week before because coin is on a tear. You can't stop it. But anyway, let's see what our payment looks like. Um, as mentioned, the synthetic 130, thank God for that. We made 10.4 million. Synthetic 140, you know, it's only a debit because we didn't close it. 2 million debit. Short calls, $5.8 million debit. Net income was only $2.5 million. So as we stand today, we're looking at $0.38 cents per share. Obviously, that's not going to happen by the end of the month. They're going to they're gonna roll that synthetic. Um, uh, my guess is today, you know, but before the end of the week. They might do it today because they're already, you know, think of, uh, you know, 10, you know, the denominations of like $10, right? Every time it goes up 10, they, they're, you know, they can roll it. So on the, when it went to hit 150, they could have rolled it. Now it's at above 160. Now they can roll it to 160. So will they? They may. And if they do, show me the money. And then 
this payment number will look really, really good. Um, but yeah, that's where we stand with TSLY, CONY. Let me know how you feel about your CONY positions. Are you pissed? Do you think they should have put those calls out a little further? Or are you okay? What about TSLY? You know, 2% in three days? Is that okay? Eh, not really. But let me know what you think. Anyway, as I mentioned, I got to cover Defiance now. All in one video, baby. Okay, I'm tired. Woof. All right. Yesterday was December 19th. Uh, QQQY, we'll do first. It went up 0.33%. And the index went up 0.49%. But we're here for, you know, we're here for the closing price. The closing price, 16,811.85. Look at the strike, 16,780. So yet again, 100% profit. This market is on, you know, a roll, dominating. These funds are like, you know, these funds are perfect for this market. Missed out gains. We did miss out on 0.19%. So if they sold a little more in the money, we could have made a little more premium. But, you know, can't fault them. That's not terrible. Um, you know, moving on again. That, so that 1.1 million essentially that was 100% profit that we made. So again, insane, insane, insane. Now, what do they do for today? Today is December 20th. 75 contracts and 80 contracts, both with a strike of 16,830. I wonder why they don't just scatter the strikes. I guess, I don't know. They obviously do two different entry points because they think they're going to get a better price maybe. I don't know. Anyway, the break even for today, we want the... Uh, NASDAQ index to stay above 16,782. Best case scenario, it hits 16,830. It hits the strike price. That way, it's essentially cost zero to close it and there's no missed out gains. Perfect world. Intrinsic and extrinsic income. Again, intrinsic income is the value, you know, it's the, the difference between the strike and the index price, right? So, we're forfeiting that amount right away. The extrinsic is the difference between the total premium you made minus the intrinsic value, which is what we get for risking our money, right? The time, you know, the time and the risk. So, and obviously I track the extrinsic income because, you know, way back when Jay made a quote, uh, they like to pay the in extrinsic income at least. So we'll see what happens. Uh, total income for yesterday's trade, it's a little less. It's 700000 But if you look in the money, you know, the day prior, the 0.3% in the money. And then today, or yeah, today's uh, put 0.11% in the money because the market has been so bullish. They're scared. They're like, it's going to drop. It's going to drop any debt, any time. All right. Anyway, uh, running total, 10 million woo 10 million my god this is insane all right cash and treasuries went up 1.7 million but they did have more outstanding shares added so if you look on the top e1 14 million outstanding shares so again with that total income 10 million we are looking at a distribution of 72 cents per share based on 100 percent payout which is 47 percent annualized that's five cents a day or 0.28% per day. Total wins and losses, 25 wins, eight losses, 30 day IV, 18.91%. Extrinsic income only, 9.5 million or 68 cents per share. Now, if you look, I did adjust the formulas. Thank you, whoever said that comment, by the way. It made me think a little more and we got it. Intrinsic income is now greater than premium outgo. So now we have the possibility of NAV protection or NAV appreciation of four cents if we pay only that 68 cents you see in extrinsic income in blue, right? So now this on the top, you know, I can use this again because if you look, my low payout, which is 90% extrinsic, is 61 cents. My high payout, which is all income 100%, is 72 cents. So low distribution, 61 cents. High distribution, 72 cents. That's where we stand as of today. But we have, you know, we have some trading days left. Um, I'm not going to calculate that again because um, I just, you know, it doesn't matter at this point. Who cares? I'm not going to cover this part either. 
Let's go to the month end though. But again, I mentioned this before. This is the running total of intrinsic, extrinsic losses, net income. You know, taking outstanding shares. But long story short, total um, payout possible seventy two cents per share. We'll see what they pay when all said and done, and then we can see how much they're reserving for the NAV. All right, makes sense. Hopefully, it makes sense. Um, everyone asks, can you cover IWMY? Can you cover IWMY? Okay, I, I will. Th- I'm really, I'm really thinking about it, guys. I'm, I am. I'm, I'm really thinking about it. I'm actually probably, if I do, just so you guys know, I'm eliminating the payment tab um, because I think I cover everything here on the month end. You know, so this payment tab is essentially almost useless. But uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'll add a few more things, like the ninety percent. I don't know. I again, I got to think about it. Let's go to JEPY. All right, JEPY. Yesterday, how did we do? Well, JEPY settled above. It went up 0.16%, and the index SPX went up 0.2%. Pretty close. The strike was 47.50, and we closed above again. 47.68. Wow, missed out gains 0.39%. Ouch. That sucks, but still 100% profit because if you look, close price zero. What was 100% profit? It was about, you know, over 300,000, which again, for Jeppy, it's awesome. Awesome, awesome. They don't have as many sh- outstanding shares, so obviously the income is, you know, not as great. But, you know, obviously since there's less sh- outstanding shares, people owning, then, you know, people get more for, the, you know, for their buck. Um but anyway, let's see what they did for today. Uh, expiring 1220. Two sets of contracts, 175 or 42. Strike price, 4,770. And look at this. In the money, 0.03%. Is that even right? It's taken J, yeah, J33. That's the last close price. Like, oh my God, they are scared. They are scared. They're almost not even in the money. They're 0.03% in the money. They're basically thinking... There's no way. There's no way the market's going to go up. There's no way. In fact, they're thinking the market's going to go down. You know, maybe. But look at the break even. 4761, the current price is 4768. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll stay flat. We'll see, guys. So yeah, we want the market to at least end above the break even of 4761, but in perfect world, 4770, which is the strike. How much did they make for that? Not much because they didn't take much risk, as you can see, versus you know the day prior. Um, sorry. And just you know, I'm looking at column P. I know my spreadsheet moves a lot, but yeah, yesterday they, they made three hundred thousand. On this one, they're making about two hundred thousand. But again, they're taking a little less risk because they're less in the money. Cash and treasuries, two hundred twenty thousand dollar change. Nothing to talk about. Outstanding shares, 5.4 million. Total income, 3.3 million. Total distribution based on 100% payout, 61 cents per share. Annualized yield, 39%. Uh, Average daily premium, 4 cents per share. Average daily yield, 0.24%. Wins and losses, 26 wins, 4 losses. By the way, I'm going to picture this. I'm in my work parking lot and I'm making this video and people keep parking. I'm hoping no one, like, I I don't see anyone. They come up to me. Because then I'll have to be like, no, go away, go away. Um, Extrinsic income, 2.6 million or 49 cents per share. So, going to the payment. You know, as I was trying to explain before, they do make less income, but since they have less outstanding shares, you know, in the end, it comes to a similar, you know, not as high as QQQI, but so, so, uh, somewhat of a similar yield, um, you know, when all said and done. But if we take a look, um, all income, actually, we'll go to the blue first. Intrinsic income is 12 cents greater than premium outgo. So possible NAV appreciation could be 12 cents per share. Um, extrinsic income alone would produce 49 cents per share. So if we look here, our low distribution is sitting at 44 cents. Our high distribution is sitting at 61 cents. Again, the low distribution is based on 90% uh, of the extrinsic income. The high is based on 100% of all income. So we don't know what they're going to pay. 
but I do what what I want in this example. Um, I want them to pay 100% extrinsic. And that way they can keep the remaining 12 cents as NAV appreciation. Okay, going to here. Um, again, monthly income, intrinsic income, extrinsic income, losses. They've been dominating. $3.3 million income, outstanding shares. I mean, they're... Imagine their net income was $5.4 million. They'd have a dollar per share. All right, total income per share, $0.61. Cents. Again, that's based on 100%, though. So, yeah, that's where we stand with JEPY. So that was TSLY, that was CONY, that was QQQY, and that was JEPY. So needless to say, I am tired of talking. I'm exhausted. I could go into work now. But um, hope you guys enjoyed this content. Uh, if you did, please click like. Hopefully, I have now the Defiance people and the Yield Max people joining together in one video. So I should get, you know, hopefully tons of likes, but we'll see. Anyway, if you have any questions, uh, leave in the comments. And um, just out of fun, like what Yield Max fund are you pissed that no one covers or me or I don't cover? Not saying I would. I'm just curious. Because I think TSLY and Coney, like those are the main ones that people like to hear and talk about. But if you were to have a third, what would it be? Obviously, Defiance, it would be IWMY until they make the Dow Jones ones, which I don't know if they're going to make that, but they should. But um, but yeah, I'm just curious. Let me know in the comments and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, please click like. Let's get uh, let's get 400 likes on this. Let's see if that's even possible. Probably not. But, you know, why not? It's a it's a combination video. You know, so whatever. Apparently, if YouTube gets likes, they, they'll share my video on people's feeds. I don't know. I think that's what they do with their algorithm. That's what people say. Uh, but anyway, it's just a button, right? Um, but anyway, uh, comments, yeah, just like I said, just let me know what you guys think about, about everything, every position. If you own all four, let me know what you think about every position. Are you pissed about Coney? Um, are you just like, okay, whatever. It's, it, you know, it happens. Or are you just like, damn. TSLY, you know, we're kind of in the same boat every week. We know, like, uh, we're going to set, you know, sometimes we sacrifice some capital. Sometimes they get it exactly right, you know? So it's, uh, it is what it is. And these, and these QQQ and Jeppy markets up. So we're winning. We are winning. And then it's going to reset again next month. So it's a, it's a fun time to be an investor, especially a high yield investor. As always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So I really hope you had fun and I hope you were entertained. But I got to go to work, guys. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you guys make a lot of money. Later.